don't see uh I don't see her in me. It's recording by the way. Okay. Oh there we are. Okay. Yeah, this is the one. So we stop recording? So very positive. One statement that, that bothers me a great deal is that the curator hopes that next year the museum will be able to count on the support of the municipality again, even though he says he has noticed a decline in the importance of the museum for the municipal council since the last election. I take great exception to this, as do my colleagues around the table, I'm sure. That comment in itself has no other no other basis in my opinion than to vilify council. We support the Bunker Military Museum again by providing them with the space and again by providing them with funding year after year. We have set criteria to apply for funding and it's, it's set for all the museums in town and we ask for that to be to be submitted. I I am rather discouraged by these comments and this, this interview as a whole from Mr. LaRock. To talk in regards to the, the, the council the way he has, again, puts us in a very negative light. And I want to ensure the people of Cobalt that we do whatever we can to support the museums in town. And further comments, um, well, I'll save all further comments for, for uh, our, our further meetings. But again, this particular interview has a number of discrepancies that, that need to be cleared up. And I'm hoping that the Board of the Bunker Military Museum does so in an effort to try and clear the air. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Johnson. Do we have any inquiries? No, we don't have no general public, so we have no inquiries. Uh, delegations and presentations. Mr. John Shimko is here to give us a uh, presentation on doing Zoom meetings and the options available to us. Okay, John. Hi there. I just hope everyone can hear me. Um, I've got a presentation I've got on PowerPoint as well, so I'm going to start sharing the screen. Uh, what uh, before I go into this, I would just like to uh, give an example of something I'm going to be talking about, where uh, the agenda on Zoom meetings can actually be uh, be streamed along with it, so the public can follow along. And this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Uh, can can you see the screen at the moment? Yeah, so what can happen is uh, whoever is running the meeting and hosting the meeting can follow the, the agenda in a, uh, a linear pattern so people at home can read what is going on and, uh, and <clears throat> understand where you are in the meeting and also be a reminder to councillors themselves that uh, what is actually the motion. That being said, I'm going to start my real presentation. I'll just be a moment here. Okay, so the uh, intent. Online meetings have become the new way business is done. I'm not here to sell you anything, nor am I here to convince you of anything. I've been asked to give you some of my thoughts about processes and technologies <clears throat> that can aid in greater transparency, public participation, and democratic outreach by municipal government. My name is John Shimko. Uh, I am a self-professed geek with an interest in media. And I'm also a municipal councillor for uh, the municipality of, of Tomogamy and an administrator of the Facebook uh, group Tomogamy Talk. So I have a little bit of background in terms of uh, online communication. Navigating through municipal web websites can be intimidating, so especially with seniors. So I've got a few tips just before we begin on what I found to be best practices in making the political process accessible, uh, accessible and meaningful. Simple communication is good communication. Confusion is your enemy. As a first point, I think it's important to rethink and simplify any processes your citizens are required to do. The first step is letting people know where your meetings, when your meetings are. 
I was happy to see an attractive Facebook page that's regularly updated for Cobalt and links to the videos of your Zoom meetings. I was also happy to see an associated YouTube account. One suggestion though, it might be a good idea to provide notification of meetings through your Facebook page with a link to both the streaming of the meetings and a link to the agenda or package of the meeting in the Facebook notification. Many municipalities also have a news or calendar link for meeting information on their landing page of the website, but this is where the balance of extra staff work and communication lies. All of the updates take time to do and the entire process becomes useless if it's not constantly updated. Municipal meetings are extremely governed by rules. Even those directly involved, like counselors, staff, and presenters, struggle to be cognizant of these rules and conventions. The public can't be expected to be aware of the subtleties. Many municipalities have a downloadable and on-site FAQ, frequently asked questions, sheet to explain the most common of these rules. Often people who disagree with processes simply need to know the rationale for a process. Uh, I just put a little bit of a screenshot of uh, uh, the, the city of Windsor's group, and that essentially says, here's how the meetings run, here's how you sign in, and all the information someone would need to know in order to be a part of the process. One easy to rectify confusion is in the order of the meeting itself. Traditionally, an agenda has been used for this. However, online, traditional agendas can be cumbersome. First of all, they're usually in portrait rather than landscape, and your screen is in landscape. So it really minimizes the way that people can read what it is you're trying to present to them. So they become confusing. And when you have confusion, stress and agitation is usually the result, and that that ends up in being an antagonistic relationship with council. It's easily solved through a slideshow presentation like I was showing before, walking the public through the meeting and often reminding councillors of the actual motion being discussed. With very little effort, meetings become easy to follow and much more efficient and accessible. Another issue is technical literacy. Council and staff need to be trained on the basics of the technology to avert the issues before they occur. Let's use audio as an example. If you hear an audio echo or audio feedback during your meeting, there's three possible causes. One, a participant has both the computer and a telephone audio active. Two, participants with computer or telephone speakers that are too close to each other. Or three, multiple computers, like we have here, with active audio in the same conference room. Having a council that's had an individual one-on-one -on -one training session can help alleviate these. And then once you identify the problems, before the next meeting, you can usually solve them so things can run flawlessly. Uh, the solution to this, which I think I just went through, the, the host can mute the attendees one at a time. That's a quick solution. Then bring them all back uh, one at a time. And once they do that, when the problem starts to occur again, you isolate the problem. It's not a good idea to try to fix the problem usually at the meeting. You try to make do with it until the end of the meeting, but for the next meeting, you'll be able to solve it. Live meetings <clears throat> online. Okay, as we turn the corner in the COVID crisis, virtual meetings will be fused seamlessly with in-person meetings and the advantages of each should be exploited. Meetings can also be streamed live in real time or almost real time, depending on the technology. Streaming is actually quite easy and relatively inexpensive. It's not a matter of better or worse technology. There's no real better or worse way for streaming. Zoom has the potential to stream live to both YouTube or to Facebook, so you meet, or even both. So your meetings can continue with your own present technology. Each medium has its advantages and disadvantages. So finding a balance uh, that meets your aims as a council is what you want to do. As a counselor myself, I'll try to give you my opinion, but it's not really, my opinion is not right or wrong, but I do have a little bit of background in this. There's four major choices, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Zoom meetings, and Zoom webinar. Uh, to keep this short, because I know there's a limit on the presentations, I'm going to very quickly go over the Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and Zoom meetings, and then go to what I think is your best solution. Uh, <clears throat> for Facebook Live, uh, essentially what happens in the meeting, we, you set it up and we've already set it up so it can be very easily done. A button is pressed and then uh, a, a little bit of information is filled out and then it's now being streamed live on Facebook. So it's very easy to do technically. There's a 10 to 20 second delay in the broadcast. Uh, audio and video on Facebook are compressed 
to make it go a little bit faster. So it's an inferior quality to the original Zoom meeting. Facebook by default stores the meeting in its gallery. And by default, comments and sharing of the meeting are enabled. So commenting is simple. However, it's problematic for constituents without a Facebook account to view or be informed of these meetings. So it is going to limit your, uh, your range. YouTube Live, uh, it's exactly the same process, except someone, uh, whoever is running the meeting, presses the YouTube stream button instead of the Facebook stream button. It goes out into your YouTube channel. Uh, there's a delay in the broadcast, usually about 10 seconds. YouTube, by default, automatically stores the meeting in its gallery. Uh, and by default, comments and sharing of the meeting are enabled. The viewers, however, are less likely to be signed into the YouTube accounts to comment because you can watch YouTube without actually signing in. So fewer YouTube viewers tend to read the comments and the comments are difficult to view if you're not signed in. So it's kind of, if you do want to have people commenting, it's kind of uh, re uh, redundant to have it occur twice and I know you'll probably share it on Facebook as well so then you've got comments from YouTube you've got comments from Facebook and it gets confusing because you probably should have a staffer at least read the comments in case there's anything pertinent zoom meetings so you could actually the, the way tomogamy does it uh, you could actually run it through a zoom meeting and then you invite anyone who wants to to uh, view the meeting as guests but you mute them and block their picture out that's perfectly possible. And that's the way that we're doing it. Um, video and audio as well as chatting is disabled to guest manually, except for the presenters and, and, uh, and counselors. Less steps means less possible issues. That's a good thing. Uh, one of the problems is pranksters may join calls. Uh, we had this happen in Tomogamy and, uh, and then bring in and start screen sharing. We had a swastika, I think, shared <laughs> and uh, uh, just, you know, some obscenities are said until we kick them out of the meeting. Uh, theoretically, malware, which is like viruses, et cetera, can also be transferred using Zoom, but it's a difficult process and chant, it's highly unlikely that's going to happen, but it is possible. What would happen is someone would send you a document and then you would open the document and then it would, uh, it would infect your computer. Very, very rare, but it's possible with the Zoom meetings. Uh, all the attendees in Zoom meetings are recorded in the broadcast, including audience members. So that may be an issue in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, privacy on their behalf as well. Uh, Zoom webinar, this is what I recommend. Uh, the process for the Zoom webinar is council meets as usual, just like a Zoom meeting. Uh, two links are created. One is a presenter link and the other is an attendee link. Presenter links, and you guys would all be presenters because you're counselors, uh, have certain privileges while attendee links have different privileges. So attendee link, uh, the attendee link is advertised for the public to join and presenter links are given to council. What happens then is everyone comes into the meeting the audio and video are turned off by default and, and it's very difficult except for the host to turn them on for anyone who is in the audience. However, the presenters, you guys are still operate the way that you're doing it here. Uh, town uh, councillors, committee members, applicants and town staff are panelists. Uh, if you've ever seen a webinar, essentially that's the same, same kind of process. Members of the public who join a Zoom meeting are the attendees. In the webinar format, everyone is allowed to speak at designated times, including the audience, uh, but only the panelists can be seen for video. So there'll be no video for the audience. The meeting is run by a host or host, generally the committee or council chair and a staff person to ser serve as hosts. The role of the host is to manage the meeting. Zoom webinar allows the attendee opportunity to speak during public comment periods, but then we can turn that off again. During the public comments, they'll be asked to raise their hand. So the person running the meeting will see a visual hand uh, an icon being raised. And then they say, okay, someone wants to speak. They turn their microphone on, they can speak. They turn the microphone off and council can hear it. Uh, the chair of the meeting will acknowledge each attendee, uh, raising their hand in turn. When they are acknowledged, the chair will unmute the microphone. They're required to accept this action and speak. When they're finished speaking, they go back to uh, the other one. What's nice about this is it also has in-camera sessions. Uh, they call them, I think, executive sessions, but it's the same thing. Uh, a separate private Zoom meeting is if when you have a closed meeting, there's two invitations that go out. One invitation is for the public meeting and one invitation is for the private meeting. You meet in public 
and then everyone leaves the meeting, signs into the uh, the private meeting. It's in camera. It's still recorded for the integrity commissioner if that if council so desires to do that, but it's not part of the same recording as the public meeting. Then after you go in, you return back to the public meeting, sign out, and it's exactly the same as what you would normally do in in uh, in the normal process. Uh, closed sessions are done securely in private. Once a closed session is complete, participants leave the private Zoom meeting and join the public meeting join, using their panelist join link for any potential report from closed session. Zoom webinar is my suggestion for transparent and easily accessible public attendance and participation. I believe it's you'd have to do an upgrade to your Zoom meeting account. Uh, Zoom webinar costs $530 Canadian per year for the license and it'll allow for 100 participants. I don't think you would require any more. Uh, for 500, the price is 1860. They're paid directly to Zoom, so there's no middleman fee. Uh, Zoom webinar will allow for present archiving procedures. It's flexible and will adapt well to public meetings, webinars, and information sessions. So you can use it to out, out branch and outreach for future endeavors. Uh, it's becoming the industry standard for this form of application. It's a one-step solution and allows uh, for balancing transparency, accountability, keeping in mind private, privacy concerns and control of the distribution. That is my presentation. Okay, thank you very much, John. Uh, does anybody have any questions for John? Good, thank you, John. Is there any business arising from the delegation? Being none, we'll move on to committee Staff and committee reports, 9.1 Public Works. Any questions or comments on uh, the Public Works report? Being none, uh, we'll move on. It's nice to see that uh, we're not getting the call outs to the water plant. Uh, it's uh, very, very encouraging. 9.2 animal control. Questions or comments or concerns on animal control? Go ahead, Bill. Bill. Uh, yes, to you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm not sure if I should bring this up now or perhaps uh, during councillor questions and answers, but I'll go for it. Um, I understand there was uh, an attack by a pit bull over the weekend. Uh, it was brought to my attention. And uh, I'm quite concerned about it, but uh, speaking to uh, John, I understand that it's been reported to the town. So uh, I'm hoping that something's done about it. I understand the police have been informed and also the, the uh, animal control officer. Uh, I'm quite concerned with it. Uh, there is a law in Ontario uh, that governs the use and there's requirements for owning a pit bull. And, um, as it, and and that, that came about because of a fatality, I believe in Toronto where a child was mauled to death. So I certainly don't want that to happen here, um, especially if we have an animal like that running around in town. Guaranteed, it has been reported to the uh, police and uh, I believe they're looking for it. Is that right, John? Angela? Go ahead, Angela. Muted. Do, do we have any feedback from uh, animal control yet on this issue? Because it's not just a matter of the. You're muted again, Angela. Okay. So I'll try again. 
Um, have, have we got any feedback from animal control, um, on where she's at with her steps? Because it wasn't just a matter of this dog was running loose. It jumped over its fence out of its yard and attacked a dog on the road. No, we haven't heard back from her. I don't believe. And this is the second incident with this dog now. Okay. Well, we don't know when the first one was, so it's hard to keep uh, tabs on that, I guess. Yeah, no, it's just I was approached by a couple of residents while I was out shopping. That's the only reason I have the background information I do. Okay. Anything to add, John, or? Just a second there. John's having technical problems. Okay, Angela, John tells me that uh, she is looking into it. And as soon as she, we get the information from her, we'll get back to you. Okay. I didn't even know where this happened, so uh, it's kind of news to me, but we'll do what we can to prevent it from happening again. Any more on the uh, animal control? Okay, bylaw enforcement. Questions, comments on bylaw enforcement? Okay, I want to thank Mr. Gilbo. He's doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Uh, 9.4 Fire Chief. Report. Okay, no uh, comments or questions on that one either. Okay, be it resolved that council accept the staff and committee reports as presented. Mover and a seconder, please. Matt and uh, Angela. Oh, sorry, all in favor. Okay, item 10, correspondence for council direction. 10.1, 2020 statement of remuneration and expenses for council members. Questions, comments, concerns? Well, I have a, one comment. We're still the lowest paid council in the, the greater part of Ontario that I know of. Something to consider. Go ahead, Doug. You're muted, Doug. Hey, did that work? God, I, I'm used to the space bar from last meeting. It doesn't seem to work anymore. Uh, just, you know, when are we going to actually come to grips with that? We've talked about it for over a year now. I think probably we should look at reviewing the information that was given to us, what, eight months ago or so now? And uh, let's just have a discussion on it, make a decision and move on. Perhaps on our okay. next agenda. Sounds good. We'll get it added to the agenda. Any other comments? Okay, 10.2 then. Requests by Royal Canadian Legion Ontario Command to put an ad in the military service recognition book. This is basically for information. We don't normally advertise in that uh, magazine, I don't believe. Go ahead, Doug. Getting used to this. Uh, 
I think this is that kind of an issue that uh, it is something that I think there's almost an obligation for us to continue to recognize and appreciate uh, the military who have served us so well. Uh, I'm all in favor of it. I just wonder how much money we have. I know John's in a budget process, uh, but I would think something nice like a quarter page full color would be adequate. Uh, but certainly it's something I think every municipality should be doing. Any more comments? Go ahead, Pat. Am I muted or unmuted? I'm good? Okay. Um, yes, I, I, I'd like to see us um, advertise in there, especially when we do have the, the bunker in town as well. Uh, and, and at Sports Legion, these books are quite thick, um, probably a couple hundred pages each time they come out. They're people um, pay to put their family, their family's uh, military history in their picture, whatever. And those books are then put out to the public free of charge. So that way, um, any of our veterans can be highlighted in those, in those books. And this is now, are we up to 10, 9, 10? The eighth, sorry. I think I've looked through most of them and um, they're quite impressive. They're very well done. Uh, so I think we should do our support that way if we can. At whatever level we feel might fit into the budget. Okay, sounds good. Any more comments? Bill? Yeah, through you, Your Worship. Uh, I w I'm in favor. Uh, I just like to know the cost. Uh, what would it cost to do this? That's basically all I need to know, or I would like to know. Hey, John. Okay, I don't think any of you has got that because his mic is, but that page two shows the cost of the ad. So it's, if uh, you just want to make a choice at what is, how much you want to spend on it. Uh, Doug had said a quarter page full color is uh, $570. George? I don't know, am I on again? Okay, that's good. Sorry about that. I've had trouble with the microphone and the uh, the system since the uh, meeting started. So I appreciate John being here to help out. Um, so we can bring a resolution to the council um, next meeting with uh, an option of uh, a quarter page or a tenth of page. It'll be up to you, but it'll be there to be voted on. Good, folks. Excellent. Okay, 10.4, Canada Healthy Communities Initiatives Grant Request Discussion. I'm gonna pass this on to John. He can fill us in on uh, what the girls have been working on and stuff like that. Yes, thank you, uh, Your Worship. The, um, this initiative has to do with uh, funding for by the federal government on community initiatives where uh, it's anything to do on an outside park type setting, municipal owned park, um, that promotes activities in recognition that uh, in this year people have been sort of locked into their homes and, and so there are a number of options and, and concepts that uh, the staff have been working on as to what's there. It, it is a little bit of a long shot. Uh, it's 30 million dollars uh, across Canada. Uh, the top end of the grant is two hundred thousand dollars but uh, there are some really good ideas um, there that we'd like to uh, Put our best foot forward. Uh, we have a fairly good concept going on that brings in a fair amount of uh, items here. I was hoping to get it done this weekend. It has to be out before the next council meeting, so uh, um, there has to be some kind of you know thought process or agenda. It, it is a 100% funded, although um, sometimes these grants uh, are recognized a lot better when there's some in-kind uh, by the uh, 
participant and we have a number of in-kind items that we can use to uh, flesh out this area to make it a, um, a four season participant friendly, passive and uh, active recreation area down by the, uh, by the splash pad. Okay, thanks, John. Is there any questions, uh, Angela? Um, I went through the list and I think it's a great list. Uh, kudos to the girls for putting it together. Uh, the only question I have is what is meant by create a rock face for the mining competitions? Are we talking like a climbing wall? No, I think I can answer that. Uh, the rock the mining competitions were held down at the arena for many years. Uh, mm -hmm. Several people have organized it. I won't mention any names, but they're tired of doing it. And not only that, but we've run out of space down there to host the mining competitions. Since the one backside behind the uh, washroom facility is rock, there was a suggestion maybe we could find a spot there to host these mining competitions. Pat's well aware of the mining competition, so is Doug and, you know, just uh, it was a suggestion for if we can find a spot to host it. Okay. Go ahead, Pat. Now, I read through um, all the proposal and uh, it's just terrific. And yes, we do need another spot for the mining competitions because we've got too many holes in the rock over at the, the arena. We need, we need more flat space again to keep them going because those mining competitions have been very, very popular too. And I think the whole project is going to be a big bonus um, for our citizens. You know, uh, so uh, it'll give us, it'll give everyone a, a boost and give everyone something to do over there in the park. So all in favor of it. Absolutely, thank you. Doug and Angela. Hey, that worked with the space bar that time. Life is getting better. Like everyone else, I was really delighted with this list of potential projects. Uh, I do think it would far exceed the $200,000 limit that we could possibly ever get, which we probably will never get close to. Um, so I'm thinking we should probably uh, send them all in and see what we can get. Uh, they're all good. I, the tennis courts ones, Mayor Belanger and I looked at that about 10, 12 years ago. And the surface down there was tacky then. I don't know if it's been repaired or anything since. But I'm thinking if you want to do something for the kids like a uh, riding bikes and things like that, you need to put a new surface and probably get rid of the chain link fencing, that kind of thing, make it more uh, reasonable. But I think everything there is really, really great. Lots of ideas to go for it. Uh, I liked eight users comfort being older. I appreciate that. Um, I think it's just a great idea. And if what we don't get funding for, maybe as a council, we can look at trying to do some of these things ourselves, like under number three, mini putt, find a way to have it accessible to the public. Right now, it looks a lot like Stalag 17 down there with this huge fence around it. Um, I, I can't really kind of support that presentation, but maybe there's some things we can do this summer coming that would make things a little bit better. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilcox. Angela? Um, just one thing I'd like to probably add to this list is uh, upgrading the power down at the park um, to make it more flexible for other uses as well. Can't hear you, you're muted. Oh, okay, I'm using the power bar too, so that's probably the reason why. No, I'm glad you did bring that up because uh, we do have a bunch of lights that are stored down at the shop and that were bought to put in the park and were never put in. So that's a, a, a start there is to get the uh, power grid upgraded and maybe install yeah. some nice lighting. Because my understanding is there's not currently enough power if we ever want to put on any music um, down in the park for speakers and lights to run. Absolutely. Go ahead, Matt. Thank you, through your worship. I, I'm. Uh, in, in favor of all this. I think it's fantastic. Revitalizing the park space is, is integral to any healthy community, especially in light of the current pandemic. Uh, but with it being a grant, and <clears throat> as John has stated, 
with it having to be submitted before the next uh, the next meeting. Again, I'm in total support. I think we should move ahead and see exactly what we can get from this. Okay, so we're good with giving direction for council then to send out the uh, application in. Go ahead, Bill. Good, Bill. Yeah, through you, Your Worship, I agree with all my uh, colleagues. Uh, I, I would like to move ahead with this also. Absolutely. Okay, I think the general consensus is that uh, we go forward with it, no doubt. Okay, any more comments, questions on that one? Okay, we have to back up here to 10.3. I missed it. Discussion for the need to fill vacancies and make appointments for the Cobalt Library Board. Doug, would you like to uh, spearhead this one? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> but I will. Um, yeah, we've, we've had two resignations from the library board, our chairman and our treasurer, which leaves us shy of uh, being able to get a quorum. So we desperately need to find some more people. We can have up to nine. I think we have five at the moment, four at the moment. Um, so I, I would like to see us make it open to the public at large, try and get perhaps as big a board as we can of interested people. Um, uh, certainly, I would like to make it open to everyone in the town. You know, I think uh, younger members, people with children, parents, you know, get, get, get a little bit more involvement in it and see if we can make sure our library keeps moving in the way that our community wants it to do. Okay, absolutely. Thanks, Doug. Go ahead, Angela. Um, given that this is for uh, the library and we want to get um, as many people interested as we can or at least get the application process started, can I suggest that this is maybe something we might want to see if we can do a blurb on the radio about? Because I think it's very important to have a strong board. Yeah, we can look into the cost of doing that and, and uh, definitely put a couple blurbs out there. But we'll use Facebook, we'll use whatever else we have at uh, our disposal. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, just to follow up on Angela. Yeah, I think we should use all the media that we have around that's available, the speaker, the radio, uh, whatever we can come up with. Perhaps an interview with CBC and get it right would be good. Yeah, okay. Any more on uh, that uh, issue? It's too bad we did lose a couple of volunteers. But... Uh, go ahead, sorry, Pat. Is my space bar working? Oh, yeah, it takes a minute to go through. Okay, for, well, first of all, I would really like to say thank you to all the library board meeting members for their service because there's a lot of years of service in there. And, uh, and to all the board members from different committees around the town, but renewal is good too. So uh, I think we should always be looking towards that with any of them. And I think the library board's gonna be the forefront here for renewal, so. Uh. Okay, thanks, Pat. We still have a good CAO in place there who uh, works very hard and runs some very, very excellent programs. And I'm sure should appreciate having uh, people to work with and carry on with what she does. Okay. 10.5, discussion of putting out a tender request for real estate purposes. What uh, this is, we have several vacant properties for sale in town. Uh, I'm not sure if we have any properties with homes on them or anything like that, but we'd like to see if we can, if there's any interest out there. There has been questions coming in and uh, I would like to get them listed with a realtor and uh, move on and, and see if we can dispose of some of them. Go ahead, Doug. Muted, Doug. <laughs> okay, everybody understands PEBCAX and what we're like. But anyway, uh, just wanted to make sure perhaps we could pass a lot of these properties by public works and other interested parties to make sure we're not creating a problem by reselling some of them, like thinking of snow dumps, that kind of thing. Uh, 
there might be some properties that perhaps adjacent people might want to pick up to make a larger yard. So try and see what we can do in a positive way to make the town a little bit better without uh, maybe hampering ourselves. Absolutely, Bill. Yes, uh, through you, Your Worship, I, I agree with Councillor Wilcox on that, but I certainly support uh, any lots that come up for sale where people have the chance to buy the lot and perhaps build homes uh, that would only help us as a town uh, would sell the town. So um, yes, I encourage uh, uh, any lots that's for sale to go up for tender. Go ahead, Angela. I think however, however we decide to do this, we got to be very careful that we make it open and fair for everybody to um, potentially purchase, not just people who are looking to make yards larger. No, there's a process we have to follow. It's got to be made uh, public and everybody should have an uh, equal opportunity. All right. Any other questions, comments? 10.6 direction required as to whether council desires to have regular meetings streamed on a platform such as Facebook. I'll open the floor up to whoever wants to start with that one. Go ahead, Angela. Um, I have no problem with being streamed on a media platform. I have a bit of an issue with it being streamed on Facebook for obvious reasons. Um, we've been roasted and vilified numerous times, and I can't see that the comments that would be happening during a meeting would be all positive. You're muted. Yeah, I just said absolutely. Um, I agree so with you. I would prefer to see another platform used for the streaming and consider maybe just putting a link to the Facebook page rather than streaming. Hey, Matthew. Through you, Your Worship. I, I'm in agreement with Councillor Adset. I believe that uh, Facebook streaming is the equivalent to the Wild West, and I don't think we need to get into that type of uh, back and forth, and, and the comments can get quite nasty on there at the best of times. However, I, I do support uh, the portion of John Shimko's presentation where he discussed Zoom webinars. I've taken part in many Zoom webinars, and the format is, is great. It's easily moderated, and it is something that we can uh, moderate by committee. So I'm in total support of, of live streaming, but I'd like to see us lean towards Zoom webinar format. Excellent. And we will get this done sooner than later, so everybody will be able to watch it whichever way we decide to go. Any other questions, comments? Go ahead, Doug. Just a second, uh, Councillor said, Councillor. Johnson, uh, I, I think the fellow's strong recommendation for web seminar or for Zoom seminar webinar makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm always distrustful of some of the bigger things like YouTubes and Facebooks. Uh, the, the commentary doesn't bother me. I can ignore that kind of stuff, but uh, it's just opening up the access to a much larger audience of people who might want to get into malware and other kinds of things. And I think we might be piggybacking a, a mistake if we went that route. So I'll, I'm going to follow up with uh, Matthew's recommendation. Great. Bill? Yeah, through you, Your Worship, uh, I want to also uh, follow up with uh, Matthew's recommendation. I think the Zoom webinar and uh, Mr. Shem uh, Shemenko, Shemenko's me uh, meeting or presentation was excellent. And I would rather go that way than uh, live stream on Facebook also. I think there's just too many uh, too many things that we could get into uh, that would not serve us well to Facebook. Okay, anybody else have any comments? Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, I'm in agreement with uh, Zoom webinar. Uh, I've been involved in those two and they're they're very good. So I think that's our way to go. Okay, thank you. Angela and then John. Um, I, I think before we do anything, we may want to 
think about boosting um, our signal in the community center. I'm just watching, there's quite a lag right now happening. Yeah, okay, that's uh, probably something we can get done through COVID funding or something or other. John? Thank you. Um, yes, the, web, the webinar uh, system is attractive, however, and I hate to use the word however, um, however, uh, I believe it's really important that we have to have a moderator, a third party in here that understands it. And, and um, John is, uh, Shimko is, is an excellent person. As you know, at the beginning of the meeting, he was, um, it took about 15 minutes to get things uh, done properly. And um, I am basically the moderator right now and I've already made a couple of mistakes on sound and on recording the first two minutes. I don't think we're recorded. So uh, if we plan on doing this, uh, I think it's vital that we have a moderator and some IT person that can moderate the meetings while myself as the CAO, clerk treasurer is uh, able to do that job. Thank you. Go ahead, Angela. Matthew made mention that it could be moderated by a committee. Um, could we get him to expand on that comment? or maybe I misunderstood him. Go ahead, Matt. We'd have to check the, the Municipal Act and ensure we're not infringing upon anything in that regard, um, considering it would be considered work that could be carried out by staff. However, upon clarification of that, it is something that can be moderated by committee. So I would have no problem uh, looking after the moderation, uh, you know, making microphones live, muting people, uh, and, uh, you know, keeping an eye on things, participants, to make sure that we don't have anybody flashing any, you know, unnecessary visuals or anything uh, during during the webinar. But with the webinar format, that drastically cuts down on the, the ability for people to jump in and kind of sabotage the meeting. So, it's much easier to moderate. Now, the only, again, the only thing that we need to check is to make sure that we're not infringing upon anything within the act and, and ensure that we can do this. So maybe a call to municipal affairs just to double check. And, and then if that's a go, then I'd, I'd gladly uh, look after that. Okay, we can check what municipal affairs then and get back to you, so, okay? Anything else uh, somebody would like to, anybody would like to add? No. Okay, John will check with the uh, staff will check with municipal affairs and find out uh, just exactly what we can and can't do. Okay, correspondence for council information 10.7 mining museum post budget report and annual request for support. Go ahead, Angela. Um, I went through this information and uh, I confirmed with the staff that this is the same financials that were submitted last year with their uh, request, 2017-2018 uh, financial statements, um, and a 2019-2020 budget. Uh, respectfully, I think that we need um, financials a little more up to date than that. Uh, I would prefer to see a 2018-2019 financials, and I would like to see a 2020 and 2021 budget. Okay, we'll see if we can get that from them for you, no doubt. Yes, um, I've already sent a message on to uh, the, the board and asked them for that uh, information. Okay, Bill? Yes, there's a, another question for me is, um, can you give me uh, the list of board members for the mining museum? Who are they? And are they active, up to date? They have members listed in their forums there, but I'm not yeah. sure how many of them are still active or still here. That was part of our Does request was a board of... of uh, the the report that's provided has the list of the 20, 20, 20 21 board members. Matt? And, and nothing to add, Your Worship. Uh, John just clarified. Thank you. Angela? So we'll get that information before we continue going any further with that. It's, uh, and we'll definitely bring it to Council. 
PSAB budget package for 2021. We're getting a little bit of a cut there from DSAP. Uh, the reserve contribution uh, for $4,029, which is better than that, I guess. Comments? Bill? Yeah, I see we got a zero, uh, yes, true, Your Worship, a zero uh, percent increase based on the fact that they dipped into the reserve fund. Uh, this question, I think I asked last year, a couple of years back, brought to my attention that they had a pretty good surplus fund. Uh, so I see they're using it this year. So that's why we're getting a zero percent increase. So I'm quite happy about that. Excellent. Any other questions, comments? Thank DSAB for that. 10.9 District School Board Northeast Community Planning and Partnership Policy Procedures. Information for Council. Comments on that? Okay. 10.10 .10, Lake Tomiskaming Draft Tour Guide. Everyone had a chance to go through that and look at it. That's in a it's going to be a pamphlet, I believe, and it's a take the lake tour a thing that goes through the town here and highlights museums and so on and so forth and all the way around Lake Tomiskaming through the Quebec side and down to North Bay and back up. No comments uh, on that one? Okay. I have, a, I have a motion. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Pat. Okay, yeah, um, I was very impressed with the look of the pamphlet this year and what's coming up. Okay. Oh. You're good. You're off, you're, you're muted. Yes, okay. Am I there now? Nope. Space bar, <laughs> that works. Uh, I was really impressed with that, uh, the way it, with the uh, pamphlet this year, and just the the way that whole tour has been put together gradually over the last few years. Um, working with the the different museums and going on the the tours and everything. This is a well used tour. It spreads from North Bay all the way up to here and around the lake into Quebec. And it does bring a lot of tourists through from a, from the outside. So it's very impressive. Excellent. Thank you, Pat. Okay. I have a draft motion. Be it resolved that council accept the correspondence items as presented. Can we get a mover and a seconder? Doug and Angela. Pat, all in favor? Other business, is there any other business? No closed session, no business arising from the closed session. Confirmation bylaw, be it resolved that bylaw number 2020, being a bylaw to confirm that the proceedings of council of the Corporation of Town of Cobalt be taken as read at first, second and third time, and finally passed on this second day of March, 2021. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Doug and Angela, all in favor? Okay, adjournment. Be it resolved that committee of the whole meeting be adjourned at 729. Mover and a seconder. Doug and Matt, all in favor? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>